All right, so my name is Shannon and I'm gonna be presenting on Activision Blizzard as, a, as my recommendation for the Thunder Fund. So just kind of a quick synopsis on what I'm gonna go over in this presentation. I'm gonna start off with my investment theses and a few key stats about the company. I'm also gonna go more in depth about the company itself and about the industry the company is in. And then lastly, I'm gonna talk about their valuation. Oh, there we go. So, so I have some key stats here. As you can see, they are a very large company. In fact, they are the largest video game publisher in the United States. Uh, another key stat too, as you can see, is that their price right now is very close to their 52 week high of $86. And their 52 week high actually came during the pandemic. A lot of the video game industry saw a huge spike in revenue due to the stay at home orders. And they're projecting a 17% revenue increase for the next few years because of the new gamers that came from the pandemic. There we go. So just kind of more about the company itself. It's traded on NASDAQ. Its ticker is ATVI1 or ATVI. Um, as you can see, they, their mission is to create very interactive games. They want their users to be video game lovers for a lifetime. Obviously, my recommendation is a buy. Again, their current price is around $80 and their target price is around $96. So some of the catalysts I'm gonna go over for their company is esports and online leagues. Esports is a very growing sport. There's a lot of interest in it and same with the online leagues. Last year, there was actually a teen who won over $3 million just from playing a video game. And I don't know if any of you guys know this as well, but Nichols also just announced an esports team last year. So there's a lot of interest in that. And it's kind of a growing sport. Next are the new releases and updates. One of their biggest franchises is Call of Duty and they actually just released the new installment last week. On top of that too, after they release the installments, they continue to perfect and add new features and listen to the user's feedbacks about the games. And then lastly, they had a restructuring plan they announced last year where they wanted to cut out unnecessary um, processes that, cost, that were very costly. And because of that, they're actually going to be hiring 2,000 new personnel to help with the demand that they had through the pandemic. For risks, obviously a huge risk is COVID-19, but it's actually not what you would expect. Because of the stay-at-home orders, they, um, a lot of gamers started playing more because they're at home, but with the stay-at-home orders and a possible vaccine, there will most definitely be a decline in the sales as people won't be at home as much anymore, but that's kind of expected because of it. Another huge risk is competitive and consumer preferences. They obviously can't control the trends and fads kind of like with fashion and clothes. They can't really predict what consumer preferences are. It's very random. Uh, for example, last year, there was a very popular game, Fortnite. They can't really control what their consumer preferences are. On top of that too, they also can't control if their consumers pre prefer a different competitor. And then lastly is their revenue dependency. They rely for the majority of the revenue, revenue only on three of their franchises. So if one of these franchises was to take a hit, it would definitely affect their revenue. Sorry, it like, takes forever to move between the sides for some reason. That's fine. It gets difficult when you're on the internet and on Zoom, so. Okay, there we go. Can I full screen this again? Sorry. It's okay. Okay. So kind of more about their industry. They are a part of the communication sector, more specifically the entertainment content. Uh, companies that are in that industry or that more specifically entertainment content are Disney and Netflix. Uh, throughout the pandemic, online streaming and socially distant entertainment, such as video games, where it kind of grew a lot. On uh, Netflix, for example, they had a huge spike in their stock price as a lot more people were taking parts in um, activities and entertainment that um, complied with state home orders. Uh, and on top of that too, uh, a lot of the American lifestyle is geared towards 
mobile devices, uh, online streaming and social media. And so the communications industry has definitely been growing a lot because most Americans, the staples in their life are either binge watching TV shows, playing video games or social media. I mean, I'm pretty sure we all know someone who either watches Netflix, has some form of social media or plays video games. Kind of more um, about their outlook. Like I said earlier, with the development of a vaccine, they'll definitely see weekend sales and engagements just because people won't be at home anymore. They won't be as bored. However, because of the pandemic, it actually created a new stream of gamers. And they estimated that even if only one third of these new gamers stay, the market and their consumers, will the base will be structurally larger than it was before. So despite losing some of the gamers through the pandemic, once the stay at home orders are lifted, they'll still have a much bigger market than they did beforehand. And also what I mentioned before too, with online gaming leagues and esports, those are gaining a lot of popularity too. And then lastly, because of online streaming kind of taking over TV and cable, a lot of ad advertisers are moving their ads from away from TV more into streaming and um, mo mostly mobile games as well. So they're looking to kind of, a lot of this industry is looking to kind of grow their revenue more from in-game ads as a lot of those ads are moving away from TV. So kind of more about their competitors. As you can see, Activision Blizzard is easily the largest company out of its competitors. Electronic Arts, also known as EA, they're very big too. They make games like Madden and then Take-Two also is very big and popular. They make NBA, they make NBA 2K. Zanga does more so mobile games like Words with Friends. And then SciPlay does slots and casino games. They're the smallest one though. So out of its competitors, Activision Blizzard is the only company that has both mobile games, PC games, and uh, console games. Electronic Arts and Take-Two, they only specifically make games for only one or two types of mediums, whereas Zanga and Skype, Cplay, Skype, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but Skyflight, they only really make mobile games. So Activision Blizzard kind of has that advantage where they make games for both. Uh, Shannon, who makes Candy Crush? Oh, Activision Blizzard did. I, Activision. I was gonna, yeah. yeah, they have a different segment that makes it. But so kind of more in-depth information about uh, their financials. As you can see, Activision Blizzard is and Zanga are the only two companies that actually showed EPS growth over the past year. However, Zanga did show a lot of EPS growth, but they're very still a very small company that it only really increased like 20 cents, but it looks big because of how small it was before. Kind of the same thing with their revenue growth. However, they have definitely kind of shown a decline um, over the past quarter with that. But as you can see, this is a very profitable industry right now, especially with the pandemic and Activision Blizzard is very consistent with their growth. Okay, so more about their company. So, uh, like I said, they make Candy Crush, they make Call of Duty and World of Warcraft. They make a lot of other popular games, but those are their three biggest franchises. They also are very, like a stock like a stock portfolio, they're also very diversified in the types of games they make and in the different mediums they use. They make a bunch of different games like simulation, strategy, sports, racing games. They also have them available on computers, gaming consoles like Xboxes and Playstations and on mobile devices. Uh, that's kind of one of the advantages with Activision is that a lot of these new gamers, once they go back to their jobs, they can still play on their mobile games still. So say if they were to take a bathroom break or like a lunch break, even if they don't have their gaming console on them, obviously not at work, they'll still be able to get that their little gaming fix in. Um, in fact, Call of Duty is so popular that I actually have this link down here that at any given time, there's normally around 2 million players playing just this one Call of Duty game. As you can see right here, it has about 2 million players. I've checked it multiple times throughout the day and it's always around 2 million. And this is only just one installment of the games. There's also like, I think three or four other Call of Duty games. Okay, so moving on to their management. They're, I don't know why it's not loading. There we go. Okay, so their CEO, Robert Kotick, AKA Phil, 
he actually dropped out of college because he had a vision for a comp type of company he wanted to create it, and he was actually the mastermind behind the Call of Duty franchise. He is one of the longest tenured CEOs or any executive in any U.S. company as he's been the CEO of Activision Blizzard since 1992. Because of that, he is primarily responsible for both the success of Call of Duty and Activision. Next is their president slash chief operating officer, Daniel Allegri. He is a very, very educated man. He went to Princeton and Harvard. He got a dual MBA and JD from Harvard at once, which I thought was very interesting. Um, he has a lot of experience as before he's as before he started working at Activision, he was actually at Google and he actually helped a lot with growing their global retail. He kind of is responsible for like inspiring creativity. And another interesting fact about him was that he actually knows how to speak, I think, seven or eight languages. He knows like Russian, Chinese, French, Spanish, which I thought was very interesting. And then lastly, we have their CFO. He is, again, also Ivy League educated. He went to Dartmouth and then received his MBA from Harvard. He's been working at Activision for a few years now, but he's only been the CFO since January, the beginning of last year, January. Um, but before he was at Activision, he actually did have experience and a background in video games as he worked at Microsoft in their Xbox division, in their Xbox division as the VP and Chief Operating Officer. All right, so next with the revenue, as you can see, the revenue's like steadily grown over the past few years. There was a little hit in 2019, uh, kind of getting back to what they can control with the consumer trends. There was a game Fortnite that was very, very popular and that kind of diminished their sales away from Call of Duty because it was a very similar game to Call of Duty. But their average growth rate for the revenue is around 8.9%. However, it is expected to hit around 20% in 2021 going through 2025. Now I also have another graph where I showed what they reported the revenue as and what their estimated for the revenue was before the quarter. Um, for the last 10 quarters, they've beaten what their estimates were seven out of the 10 times. It shows that they're outperforming what their industry, they're outperforming their industry. So kind of, kind of going more into their segments. So their first segment that makes most of the revenue is Activision. They kind of focus more so on the retail channels and their digital channels on how to sell their products and the publishing and licensing software. Their biggest franchise that they're responsible for is Call of Duty. Next, we have King, which is the segment that creates Candy Crush and other mobile games. They make a lot of games with Facebook that they release them on Facebook. Um, but they rely mostly on mobile and PC games and they also produce a lot of their sales through in-game ads. I know a lot of people that if they're stuck on that one level of Candy Crush, they'll pay like 99 cents to get like an extra life. That's where they make a lot of the revenue from. And then lastly, there's Blizzard, which they kind of focus more so on the online leagues and esports, and they also create World of Warcraft and Overwatch, which are two other very big franchises for them. Then we also have their revenue breakdown by location. It's not so normally most of the revenue comes from North America, but they have seen an increase about five to 10% for the past few years in their European, Middle Eastern, and African sales, whereas their Asia and Pacific sales kind of stay the same. But they've slowly been kind of um, breaking down into that market and over in Europe, mainly because they actually just purchased a company a few months ago in Europe. So they've kind of been um, breaking into that sector over there in Europe for video games. So with their EPS, this looks very similar to their growth for their revenue. They did take a hit in 2018 and around 2019 because of the popularity of Fortnite. And they also had lower rankings for Call of Duty in 2019. Unfortunately, when Call of Duty is such a big franchise, if it didn't live up to users' expectations, it kind of can affect what their EPS and stock price are. However, since then, their EPS has grown 180%, which is pretty big spike and as you can see it's kind of the highest it's been since the beginning of 2018 right now but it normally has an average growth rate of around 14.76 percent and lastly the valuation analysis so as you can see here similar to the revenue they're constantly beating what their estimations are out of in the last quarter they beat eight out of eight of analysts expectations and this kind of shows that they are definitely outperforming their market and that they um they're definitely undervalued because they're constantly beating their they're constantly beating their competition and they're also beating what their expectations and estimations were for them but um one of the biggest things that i noticed was that they continue to outperform their industry right now but ea and take two 
their stock prices are around between 120 and 170, whereas Activision, which is much larger and continuously beats them and outperforms the, their sector, is only around $80, which was kind of interesting to me because I would think that Activision is much more financially stable than the other two companies. And kind of going off of that point, as you can see right now, they, their estimated target price should be around 174 when in reality it's only at $96 right now. So you can see that right now they aren't, they're definitely, there's definitely much room for growth in them and that they definitely, they definitely, um, they're definitely outperforming not only their sector, but their market as well. Their stock price since the beginning of 2019 has grown 36%, whereas the market's only at about 3% growth for this past year. And so there's definitely much room for them to grow right now. And I also think that it's a much more stable investment for a fund because there is plenty of room for them to grow. And as you can see here, like they can grow up to 174 and they're only at $80 right now. And I would definitely say it's a much safer investment because not only do they have a lot of room for growth, but they're also a very well-established company. They've been profitable for years now and they're a very well reputable name that even if one of their franchises was to take a hit in their sales, they still have plenty of room and plenty of money to develop another franchise which you can't really say the same for any of its competitors all right and that's the end thank you i can take questions now <laughs> you know what that current exit multiple is because you have up you had for 174 was at like 19.3 do you know what they currently are i'm not sure i think they were around like 18 though 17 or 18 okay but look I think it changes so okay and so if you were going to add us to the fund how do you think it would benefit it um, I definitely think that right now if you look the, uh, the communication sector it only really has Disney and this is kind of a different um, part of the entertainment content than Disney Disney is more so like movies and um, they also have the parks and everything whereas this is kind of a little bit different like with Activision, it's not only just like actual video games, it's games like Candy Crush, it's games like Farmville on Facebook. It's not only just like video games like Call of Duty or like any of those war games. It's not very traditional video games. It's more so like mobile games. Like, I mean, I play Candy Crush and there's a ton of other mobile games they have too. So I would say it's not so much video games. It's definitely diversified that it has, it has both apps and then other like games you can play with like a console. Do you have any so inkling would, of how much you would think we should invest? I, mean, I know we're going to discuss that another day, but did you have anything in mind? I mean, they're not that, I mean, they're only at $80. And I know that we have, we purchased a lot of other um, stocks in the fund for around 40 shares. So probably something around there because they're not that expensive. Like I know with Disney, we purchased them for 40 shares at about $126. So I definitely think that something around 40 shares would be comparable. Okay. Sounds good. Does anyone have any questions? That was awesome. Well done. Yep. Thank you. Great job. Yeah.